Welcome back to my Nuclear War Simulator series. This is the first. There was a debate on the uh, less credible defense Reddit site about the viability of the new ICBMs that the United States is developing. And it really turned into a debate about the nuclear triad and whether or not it was worth it to have a land-based, silo-based ICBM fleet when we have a sub-fleet that can be survivable and viable to cause enough of a retaliation to ensure mad, mutually assured destruction. So it is an interesting debate, to be honest with you, and it's one that calls into question a few things. It's based on the premise that the subs would be survivable, meaning that we uh, are not at a point that the other sides could track reliably where our nuclear subs, our ballistic missile subs are, and detect and destroy them in the case of a conflict. Because if that was the case, it would make the sub-launched missile leg of the triad to be the most vulnerable, perhaps. But bearing in mind and going off the assumption that that we're not at a point where they can reliably track our uh, nuclear ballistic missile subs and that we'd be able to be survivable enough to launch, what kind of destructive power, both for the United States, Russia, China, France, and the United Kingdom? So I did exclude some other nuclear-armed countries, and there's some level of debate about what they have viability of sub-launch missiles. But I basically went after that. So this scenario is going to look at a attack by NATO against Russia and also secondary an attack by the United States against China. And so it'll be France, United Kingdom, and United States launching attacks on Russia and then separately United States solely focused on China. So what that means is that I'm going to allow about 15 minutes of time to pass. That's for the Western countries' subs to launch their missiles. And then time for the Russian and Chinese forces to detect, make those calls that need to be made for authorization, and launch retaliatory strikes. As you can see here, I eliminated all land-based weapon systems and air systems. And I'm going to start with France. And in France, I'm going to allocate 100% of their nuclear forces against 100% civilian targets. That's the other part of this. This is going to be strictly civilian targets. Just making this choice because I want to display what is their ultimate destructive power. And the United Kingdom is going to be similar. It's going to target Russia with 100% of its forces. And I haven't put every nuclear sub for each of these countries because there's going to be a certain amount that will be going under maintenance and other things. I did deploy the vast majority of them. For the United States, I chose to put a breakdown of 65% of its forces against Russia, and the other 35% against China. Of course, of these countries involved, China has by far the largest population, and in theory would be able to absorb the most amount of casualties. In terms of nuclear stockpiles, Russia and the United States are fairly equal overall, of course, the entire triad. Um, United States does have slightly greater number of ballistic missile subs, 14 compared to 11. And you can call into question maintenance and viability on the Russian side. Although I think they've been learning some hard-fought lessons in Ukraine, so it'd be interesting to see 
what changes may have happened on that front, but this is going to go off the assumption that their stuff's going to work like it should, and ours for that matter too. We just had an ICBM test failure. So you never want to take anything for granted, but for the scenario purposes, we're going to take it for granted. So I'm running things fairly in slow time. Somebody left a comment recently. I don't like when it's sped up. So for the sake of that person, I'm running this in a relatively slower 10 times speed. I'm not going to do one for one. Otherwise, you know, we're talking an hour passing this video and nobody wants to watch an hour of this. So, so I'm waiting until about the 15 minute mark to have Russia and China start to retaliate. So we've got to count down the time here. So I'm going to pause and I'll start to initiate the other side. And again, giving the advantage for the first strike for the Western powers doesn't really equate to a lot in this instance because this is simply sub-base forces. But it's more as a role-playing scenario. So they're going to allocate 15% to France, 15% to the United Kingdom, and 70% to the United States. The United States is the lucky winner. But it is also kind of in scale with the enemy side, you know, enemy forces. I'm going to start running things again. One thing I did not catch early on, and I'll kick myself for this one, the range of the Chinese sub-launch ballistic missiles is such that they weren't going to launch. I end up catching it and moving them closer to the United States coast. I didn't really appreciate that when I first ran it, but already we're seeing some strikes and we're about just under 20 minutes in. So already there's some, you know, with the uh, Pacific fleet subs and now in Russia as well. That's the one advantage of these sub-launched missiles is that, you know, provided you can infiltrate closer to enemy borders, the time from launch to strike is much, much shorter compared to an ICBM's, which is going to be roughly 30 minutes. Again, that's also some of the danger. It doesn't give a lot of reaction time. But in theory, some proponents of MAD believe that subs are less destabilizing because they're going to be more survivable, so it's not as great a, I don't say, onus to start hitting the buttons in case of like false readings because your force is going to be survivable. On the other hand, with ICBMs or air bases carrying strategic bombers, if you don't act, you could pinch it potentially lose a large amount of your forces if it's a legitimate attack. On the same token, if we are truly at a point where we can engage and destroy and track and engage, destroy their ballistic missile subs with reliability, or so can they, and then that would be very destabilizing. And in fact, your ICBMs may be even more survivable or even your air strategic assets. So that's the big question, and it's one that I can't answer. Nobody else, well, then again, there's a lot of leaks out there, but for the most part, nobody's going to be able to reliably answer just how well our tracking mechanism for enemy subs or vice versa is. Satellite technology and other things, it's hard to say exactly at what point we're at. So you see, I finally caught on to my mistake, and I am moving them closer to the U.S. border to allow them to make their strikes. And I believe China is up to six ballistic missile subs. And in this scenario, again, I deployed a certain percentage, in this case, four of them. Yeah, I was messing around trying to get them to launch. I just was not having a good moment. It's a long day at work. So we see additional missile strikes coming in now. 
The Chinese subs are finally launching their weapons. Man, when you see this, even though it's a very abstract representation, just seeing all those triangles that represent missile warheads, it's an amazing sight. And you think about now this is the retaliation coming in from Russia and China and just the sheer number of them. Not to mention the sheer number that we are sending into Russia and China. I mean, think about that and think about the aspect if, you know, if this were to happen and you're watching, you know, YouTube or whatever and you're seeing this maybe tracked even in real time, that feeling as it's coming in and what's going to happen on impact. And here I kind of zoomed in a little bit. The majority of my viewers are from the United States. I felt like I want to give them a good view of as they come in. Although I have a lot of viewers from the United Kingdom. Can't say too many from France. Um, I've had some from Russia and other areas. Appreciative of all my viewers. Like some people a couple times have kind of implied I tried taking a side in some of these conflicts. But I don't do that in these videos. Like I said, there may be some separate videos where I may talk about it because I think things are far more nuanced than to say something's cut and dry. Um, I think there are some people uh, I used in my thumbnail like Putin or Joe Biden with I did that and I think there's some people that like this, you know, didn't like seeing that or whatever, but it's a thumbnail. It's meant to get you to pay attention and click on it. That's what YouTube's for. Social media is for. You're trying to get people to click and view. So, still some scragglers here. So there were still, you know, sometimes when you do these uh, target country attacks, there still be some forces left over. So I catch it when I start to calculate the casualties and that, truth be told, most of the percentage of the forces from Russia to um, the United Kingdom didn't actually launch. So we'll see that here in a second. But these are some of the last of the initial strikes. Tag there. And you kind of see how much time has passed as well. You watch that tracker at the top. So the answer is not a ton of time has passed. And you're going to see casualties far exceeding both world wars in a very short amount of time. So we're going to, once I calculate the casualties, I kind of, that's when I noticed that there were still some remaining forces left over to make some additional strikes. So. I wanted to make sure we got everything kind of represented in there. So in this initial one, 106 million, almost 107 million for China, 30 million for Russia, 24, almost 25 million for the United States. We saw France had, you know, a few, you know, several million as well. And that's when I saw the United Kingdom had virtually none. So that's so when I went here and I did not want to leave rural Britannia out, so our uh, parent country. So ran on this really fast, didn't want to cause any more delays at this point. Um, so then I went through and made sure we depleted the rest of the forces. So for the United States, what remained targeted Russia. Still quite a significant amount of missile strikes you see there. And then did the same for France, which they still had some remaining as well. United Kingdom had already expended their forces, so there's no additional there. I mean, they have a relatively small ballistic missile fleet. When it comes to size of stockpiles, like I said, Russia and the United States are fairly equal. Um, overall for the whole triad. And then China has pulled pretty far ahead of France, but they were on parity with France for a while. Maybe China, France, and then the United Kingdom. 
as far as the countries involved in this conflict. So, recalculating the casualties. So, biggest takeaway, you know, a little bit more in China, but Russia went to 37 million. The United States stayed fairly flat, about 25 million. United Kingdom now, 12 and a half million casualties. So, they exceeded France's casualty rate. And when you look at percentage of population, they probably had one of the greater amounts compared to their overall population percentage wise. Looking at some of the fallout here. So, and that's again, United Kingdom being an island country, densely populated, really bodes unwell for them versus, like, especially the United States, Russia, and China, where they have a large, much larger land mass. China, though, is very concentrated in their urban areas. And so that does work somewhat against them. But overall, total amount of casualties you see eliminate all of the parts of the nuclear triad with the sub-launch missiles, it's still enormously high. I mean, just looking at that from a scale of... Uh, what, almost, what, 190 million casualties? 190 million casualties. I mean, that's probably going to be most wars throughout history put together and what would be essentially a blink of an eye so it's definitely a very devastating effect just with that leg of the triad so hopefully this can be somewhat eye-opening and you enjoy the video like and subscribe and smash that like button like a douche uh, but in all seriousness though um I'm putting out a lot of different content, so it's not just nuclear war videos. I got stuff from a whole gym. It's pretty crazy. Been relaying some stories of, you know, from past, some funny stories, and also some hobby modeling content. Real big into miniature war gaming, especially War of the Roses, historical war gaming, and been doing some model scenery stuff and some painting, and I'm putting out some videos on that now. I encourage you to check it out. So not just going to be all about nuclear war, although I'm going to continue making these nuclear war simulation videos because they're eye-opening and there's a lot of different avenues to explore with this. So thank you. Appreciate it.